All right, welcome to the chapter entitled Real Estate Liens and Other Liens. This is the continuation or the second part of something we started earlier where we talked about the encumbrance on a property. And at that time, I told you there was an encumbrance and one of them was called an encumbrance, kind of like New York, New York. It was also called a non-monetary lien because there is no money associated with it like an easement or a license. Those are encumbrances that are non-monetary. And at the time we mentioned this second one called a lien, which is often called a monetary encumbrance because it is now associated with some value like taxes or a mortgage, all right? So this is the second half of something we've already touched on. Both of these encumbrances actually limit or reduce our right of disposition, which is one of the initial uh, branches, and the right of control, right? If I had a shared driveway and I wanted to put a fence around the entire property, I couldn't do that because it would be blocking the neighbor's access to their property through that shared encumbrance so it has reduced my right of control. Well, a lien can also reduce your right of disposition. I have the right to give property away. Well, if I owe money on it, then I cannot. Now, I know what you guys are going to say. Well, you could bring money to the table. Yes, theoretically I could, but we're gonna take that scenario off the table during this education because I really need to teach you this. So I want to say at from here on out, let's remove the option that the seller could always bring money to the table. So what happens is you got a $100,000 house and you owe 80 on it. You now have to sell the property for at least 80 to clear that lien, right? Because that's one of the things you said, I will remove all encumbrances and a lien is a form of an encumbrance. So I can no longer give that property away. It has reduced my right of disposition. And at some point, we talked about the fact that maybe the loan or the value is actually below the loan. I owe a hundred, oh, let me do that the other way, where the value is actually below the loan. I owe a hundred, but it's only worth 90 now. I'm upside down, I'm underwater. And the term we used was called negative equity. Now it has completely removed my right of disposition. I cannot sell a property for 100 if it's only worth 90. First of all, a smart consumer would never pay that. And second of all, you're gonna have an issue with that whole appraisal thing that we talked about where the appraisal is below the value. So in essence, both of these reduce our rights in the control of our property, meaning I can't put a fence around my entire property that I wanted to, and has reduced my right of disposition because now I owe financial consideration to another party like a lender. So let's get started and dive into these. So what you see is this fact that a lien is a charge or a claim against a property to enforce the payment of money. It is called a monetary encumbrance, whereas the other thing, the encumbrance, is a non-monetary. So an encumbrance is a charge or a claim attached to real property, including both the lien and the non-monetary, which is an encumbrance, okay? It lessens the value because it has reduced those rights that we just mentioned. Now, when it comes to liens, let's flip over and look at something. Now, this used to be a drawing that was actually in the book several versions ago, and they have gone away from it. So I wanted to redraw this. So what you have is this thing called a lien right here. This lien is this monetary encumbrance. 
and it comes in a specific form, meaning it is specific to one type of property or one piece of property. The lien that's on this house has nothing to do with the lien that's on the neighboring house. Those liens are specific to that one piece of property. As, and that specific lien is either acquired voluntarily, meaning I chose to get that lien, or it can be imposed upon me involuntarily, and that would be something like real estate taxes. Now, because there is a monetary value, because it's a lien, that monetary value is determined in one of two types of ways. Either statutory, and what do, does statutory mean? There is a law. Or it's equitable, meaning money, meaning what's fair, meaning it's based on some amount of money. The involuntary one that's placed upon you gets its value from statutory, meaning a law, or some equitable value. Now, the general lien that we're going to get to is always and always and always only involuntary, meaning someone does it to you. And the value that it is determined is either through some statutory law or some equitable number. So what I want you to see is this balance here. Now that you have seen this, I actually want to change it a little bit. And I wrote it this way so that you could see the balance between equitable and statutory, equitable and statutory, equitable and statutory. Now, the one thing I want to tell you is this, that at no time is there such thing as a statutory or a law that is voluntary, right? You understand that. Everybody try and think of it. There is no law in the world that's voluntary. So when it comes to a voluntary specific lien, they are always and only equitable. I drew it originally just so you could see the easy ways to memorize it because it's all of them. And then your logic should tell you there is no such thing as a voluntary law. So when it comes to something that is voluntary specific, it is always equitable. Can you think of an example? Yes. The most common example is your mortgage. It's based on the amount of value, so it's equitable. It's voluntary because you chose to do it. There is no law that says you had to get a mortgage. You could have bought it cash. You just chose to get a loan. It's specific because it only deals with this property. This loan has nothing to do with my other loan in my other county. And it is a lien, meaning a charge or a claim, held out against some amount of money. So a mortgage is a equitable, voluntary, specific lien. Most commonly, and I've told you we are lazy, most commonly a mortgage you will often hear just called a voluntary specific lien because they're only equitable and voluntary. A one that might be statutory here that's involuntary are going to be your real estate taxes. So real estate taxes are a statutory involuntary specific lien. Now, what the quiz or the test or the end of chapter questions are going to do is going to start calling these by these names so that you have to, once again, learn two things. One is you have to understand what the question's asking you, because instead of saying real estate taxes, it may say that there is a statutory involuntary specific lien placed on the property. How much is it? Now you've got to understand that that 
statutory involuntary specific lien is taxes. And here's how I figure them. Now, there are equitable involuntary, and these would be like outstanding credit cards. We are not going to discuss this in this chapter. All right. So those are the specific liens. Now, there is a general lien that is always involuntary, and this general lien actually can get placed on real property, but it also can get placed on personal property. The specific only deals with real property. The general lien, which is always done to you, typically by a court, is going to attach to both your house and your person and your Frisbee and your set of silverware and your car and your airplane and your body in general. It's going to be attached to all of it. It is always involuntary, and it is the most common one, is an equitable charge. This would be placed upon a, on you by whom? A judge. This is where you hear the word a judgment. And a judgment is an equitable, involuntary, general lien. And the amount is equitable. So if I were to sue you for $10,000 and win, you are going to get a judgment against you in the amount of $10,000, because that's fair. Whatever the lawsuit was, we're not going to get into it, but that was what's fair. There is a statutory, this is going to be like the inheritance tax. We're not really going to get into it a lot. But there is a law that says you will pay inheritance tax and it's forced upon you. All right. So understand that these liens come specific or general, and then they're either done voluntarily or involuntarily. And we're going to dive into them a little bit deeper. Okay. So that general lien is a judgment. There's the inheritance tax that we talked about for the decedents. A corporate franchise tax might be that, but specific liens are going to be like real estate taxes. That would be an involuntary one. A mortgage, that's a voluntary one, all right? Utility liens, those are going to be involuntary, meaning the, the water company has placed it. There are going to be bail bonds liens, which may be voluntary because you've chosen to go bail a friend out of jail. A vendor's lien, you will hear what's called a mechanic's lien. Now, we need to understand and explain the word mechanic real quick. A mechanic is not like a car mechanic. That is just one type. A mechanic in the legal world is anybody that has improved your property. So like a roofing company, could file a mechanics lien. Lawn care could file a mechanics lien. A carpenter that's worked on your house could file a mechanics lien because they are all a vendor. They have all provided a service to your property to fix the furnace or to put a new roof on or to spray chemicals. Those can all be mechanics and those would all end up as a vendor's lien that we're going to talk about. Now, we mentioned that the effect of these could be that some of these encumbrances run with the property, while some liens attach to the personal property, okay? Liens will bind successive owners until that lien is paid off. That's what we're talking about. If I sold you a house subject to, remember, the mortgage stays in place, that lien would run with the land and you are now required to pay it. Now, the mortgage company is going to have a clause in there that says, hey, called the acceleration or the alienation or both of them. But these uh, encumbrances run with the land until they are paid off. And if you think about that general warranty deed, the second thing we promised 
was covenant against encumbrances, which says, I will pay off all of these liens that are out there.